Welcome back everyone. I'm Dr. Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com going over lesson 6.17 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer. And I hope you've read this lesson getting ready for this video. And we're going to talk about the aldol addition and the aldol condensation reaction. And the point of this is to use an enolate as the nucleophile to attack another ketone or aldehyde. Now the initial nucleophilic attack of a enolate on a ketone or aldehyde is going to be a type A reaction. If we use it only that far, we're going to use it to do what is called an aldol addition. If you think about this, we're going to initially have the deprotonation again of the alpha carbon, the main theme of the last few lessons. Now I'm going to draw the resulting enolate kind of upside down of what it looks like here. Right, I'm going to draw this alpha carbon, and that alpha carbon has an R group on it, so R, here's my alpha carbon with the minus charge. On the other side I have the ketone with its R prime group. So I've just redrawn this after it was deprotonated, so I drew kind of this species upside down. And I drew it upside down because once I have this enolate, I'm going to use it to attack another of the same exact molecule that hasn't yet been deprotonated. Right? This sometimes confuses people. But remember, if you have a flask with a sample of a compound in it, like this ketone, there are billions and billions and billions of molecules. So as soon as one of these enolates is formed, it can then attack another one of the molecules that has not yet been made into an enolate. And that will get us to the species that I show down here, where this is the ketone that was attacked, and I've attached this alpha carbon right here with its R group, and on the other side, the double bond O, R prime. Now, if we just do a type A reaction, we need to protonate this to make the alcohol. Well, what would our pro proton source be? Remember, in step one, we used the base to take this H off, so that means we have a molecule of water for every molecule we've deprotonated. So we have a source to make this get protonated. So our final product of the addition step would be this compound with the attached alpha carbon here. So you can kind of see why this is called an aldol reaction. People invented this reaction with, say, an aldehyde. Let's say if we had an aldehyde, one of these would be an H. And at the end, you have an aldehyde still that has an alcohol, so an aldol reaction. Now, the name of this reaction has subsequently, this should be a prime, been applied to any case where you have an enolate attacking an aldehyde or a ketone. So it doesn't have to be an aldehyde, but I'm explaining where the name comes from. Now this reaction will also work in an intramolecular fashion if you have two carbonyls on the same molecule. You can select one of these sites to deprotonate, and here you have a symmetric molecule. You have an aldehyde at each end. You don't need to make any type of decision. You'll just make an enolate. So enolate formation is listed here as the first step, where if we draw out the proton, we can take that proton off, and that will lead to the formation of the species shown here in box A. And now you have nucleophilic addition. Now you could draw another one of these molecules and have the species attack it. But remember, if I have a solution where I've dissolved, say, one molar of this solution, I'll still have molecules that are very far apart from one another compared to the distance of this nucleophile to the aldehyde that's attached to it through this chain. So this tends to be an intramolecular reaction when you have such species where you've got a nucleophile and a nucleophile reactive site both in the same molecule. Now, how will the product look? This is a little challenging for some students, but I always recommend that you just number the atoms that are involved in making the cycle. You're trying to attach carbon 1 to carbon 5, and they're going to make a cyclic structure. So it's nice to start just by drawing a five-membered ring. Then you can number them. It doesn't matter where you start numbering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What does matter is putting the correct groups onto each atom. So on carbon number 1, I have this aldehyde, and that aldehyde did not undergo any reaction. So in the product step here, it's still an aldehyde. 
and then carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, they don't have any other groups on that. Carbon 5, we've attacked with the nucleophile and pushed the electrons up to the O. So carbon 1 is attached to carbon 5, so we can highlight that new bond right there. See that where I'm pointing. And carbon 5 has its O, and we've pushed the minus charge onto the O. It also has an H that you don't necessarily have to draw, but I'll draw it in here. The protonation step is the water that we made in the first step, right? The OH going with the H to make water up here. We can take some of that water and use it as a proton source. And in that way, we've protonated this O that was attached to carbon number five, we have our five membered ring, and we have our aldehyde. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is we have made two chiral centers. We would expect a mixture of stereoisomers because we started with a chiral starting materials. Now you can create increasingly complex structures in this way. Say we have a huge ring of atoms with a ketone at two different positions and we add some base. Well we can think about what are we going to do as our net reaction to get to box C. Well if you've looked at sort of the pattern you're going to take an alpha carbon we're going to just think through this before we draw the mechanism. We think we're going to make the enolate. It's going to attack here, push the electrons up here, and then this will get a proton put on it. So if we're just thinking through the mechanism like that, how are we going to figure out what the product will look like without drawing all the steps, especially when it's this complicated? Well, again, I would recommend numbering. I'm going to make a ring that's one, two, three, four, five carbons. So if I'm thinking about the final product, I will simply draw a five-membered ring. And I'm going to number these one, two, three, four, five. Now I need to fill in the correct groups on each of those atoms. Well, carbon one is attached to carbon five. That's the new bond that we've made. Carbon five has the O that we pushed electrons onto, and then it got protonated. What about this huge part of the ring over here that wasn't really involved, but it should still be there in the product? Well, let's kind of highlight those atoms in blue over here, and we'll number those in a different way. Let's use letters A, B, C, D, and E. All right, that's five additional atoms that we haven't numbered already, and they're going to attach to carbons five and one. So attached to carbon five and one, I need to put those other five atoms in. So I've just put some little dots in there. I'm going to say, okay, attached to carbon one is A, A, B, C, D, and carbon E is of course attached to carbon five. So we're going to fill in the attachments and it's a little bit weird looking. It's not a perfectly nice looking ring, but we're just trying to think through what we would get. And the only group on any of these atoms, A, B, C, D, and E, is the double bond O on carbon A. So that's a way to think through how we get the final product. I guess we won't fill in these boxes here because we kind of talked through the mechanism already. All right, so as I've shown it so far, the aldol addition looks pretty useful. You can take two carbonyls and attach them to each other, but there are drawbacks. All the examples I've shown you so far have taken a carbonyl starting material that had the same groups on each side, and we're attaching one molecule of that carbonyl to another of the same molecules. Let's suppose you try to formulate a reaction where you take two different ketones and you add the base. You say, well, I'm going to do an aldol addition and I'm going to couple these together. Well, you have a problem because let's call these molecules one and two. Well, when you add the base, you have alpha position here that's a methyl group and alpha position here that's an ethyl group. I'm going to get two different nucleophiles. So let's say that I take my nucleophile like this and I add it, that's the alpha site, I add it to the carbonyl carbon of compound one. All right, so this is compound one that becomes the alcohol and compound two serve the role of the nucleophile where its alpha position is what got to react. We could also take compound two as the nucleophile and attach it to another molecule of compound two, which could become the alcohol. 
And likewise, we could take compound 1 as the nucleophile, attach it to compound 1 to become the OH, or compound 1 attached to compound 2, where these are the OH pieces like I showed here. So we actually have four potential products, and it would be very difficult to control. You could think about which alpha site is easier to deprotonate, and an anion is more stable in the less substituted position. So maybe you would favor these two products where the compound 1 was turned into the nucleophile and it attacked compound 1 or compound 2, but you still have a mixture of at least two products. Now even if I take one carbonyl where the two sides are different, I could use this alpha site or this alpha site after deprotonation as the nucleophile. So let's illustrate that. If I took this enolate, and I'll just draw an upside down version of this, I could use that to attack here, make my bond, push the charge up to the O, and then protonate. Doesn't look super pretty, but you can redraw that and get the correct product. But on the other hand, Maybe I deprotonate this alpha position. And now if I redraw my carbonyl here, I can attack, push the minus charge into the O. That will make a bond here. And then protonate that O. And we get two different products that way as well. So this is kind of messy. This is a drawback of the aldol reaction. Some improvements can be made if you think about using one coupling partner that doesn't have any alpha H's to take off. Now I've abbreviated that benzene group as phenyl, just pH, but if you think about drawing it out, you can see that that alpha carbon has no H's to be taken off. And if we use an aldehyde, there's no carbon with H's to make the resonance stabilized enolate. So aldehydes or phenyl substitute carbonyls or T-butyl substitute carbonyls are good examples of compounds that do not have any alpha H's that are enolizable. That means that when you have these, you can take a different carbonyl and you can mix it with a base. Here I'm just showing kind of a crude reaction where I mix it with OH-. A lot of times though, instead of OH-, you could mix this compound with a strong base like LDA at a low temperature in step one. And then in step two, you could add the second carbonyl. Now at low temperature with LDA, which is a strong base, you're not going to have any coupling by the aldol addition between two of these molecules. The low temperature prevents that. So then when you add this compound in step two and heat it up, you'll have the aldol condensation. And just to remind you about LDA, we've seen this a little bit earlier in the course, but it's lithium diisopropyl amide. So it's two isopropyl groups on a nitrogen. Amide is what you call a nitrogen if it's anionic. So it will dissociate. It's a bulky base that's a very strong base, but a poor nucleophile. So it won't be adding to the carbonyl itself. If you add the LDA at low temperature, you make this enolate, convert all of that carbonyl to the enolate. Then it will attack like this. So this will have the minus charge pushed up to the O. Let's attach our enolate, which is the alpha position of the aldehyde. And you see it's got this ethyl group over here. I'll just put ET for ethyl. And then in a subsequent step, you would just add some water or some other protonating agent. And you get this. Again, you've made some chiral centers. You'd expect a mixture of stereoisomers. If we tried that strategy down here, whether we add sodium hydroxide or LDA or anything else, this is kind of a trick question. There are no enolizable H's in any of these sites. So you have no aldol reactivity at all in such a case. Down here we again have an example where there is an enolizable site. Maybe we add LDA at low temperature, and then we add in this compound. And we think about what that would look like push the minus charge onto the O. So we can use this that we drew over here. And I'll draw this enolate kind of upside down. And then maybe in another step, we add water or some other protonating agent. And we get specifically this aldol addition product. 
So at this point we've seen that an enolate can serve as a nucleophile in a type A reaction with aldehydes and ketones to give the aldol addition products. But with continued heating, any of these initially formed alcohols that we've seen can lead to an E2-like pathway to give what is called the aldol condensation product. So let's consider this case here. Let's say this is a hydrogen, so we have an aldehyde. So we'll get one clean aldol addition product, which I'll sketch into box A. And let's say we keep continuing to heat this reaction product. Well, we still have an alpha proton here. If we think about taking that proton away with the base to make an equivalent of water again, and this negatively charged carbon, we can think about pushing this OH group off. This would lead to the formation of a double bond in this position between the alpha carbon and what used to be the carbonyl carbon, giving us the product in box B. And it's this alpha to beta unsaturated carbonyl that is the aldol condensation product. It's important to realize that when you make an alkene, just like we talked about when we talked about E1 and E2 reactions in our first discussion of how to make alkenes, it's important to take a look at what potential isomers you might get. Here we don't specify what these R groups are, but generally the major alkene product formed would be the more stable or the most stable possibility. And I only show you this one example of the aldo condensation products, but any of the alcohol initial aldol addition products that we learned about throughout the course of this lecture or in the primer could all be heated further to drive off another molecule of water to give you aldol condensation products.